to whatever's true. Today, we're talking about, oh wait, we have something else to happen first. What's our pun of the day? Let's see. What's a classical musician's favorite game? Just say it if you know it. Any guesses? Say it if you know it. Just shout it out. Try it. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. <laughs> Real knee slapper. Oh, that's terrible. All right. This is the moment you all have been waiting for. I've had a lot of questions. Can I get a Sig Muffin? Yes, you can. But you have to ask the question, or you have to answer the question. Scientific method must prove something that is two things. Two things. You must raise your hand. Thank you. Um, green shirt. What's your name? Yeah. Let's try it. Say it with them. Ready? Observable and repeatable. Coming at you. Good catch. Cool. Next one. The legal historical method, which is what we use to prove the Bible. Or not the Bible, sorry. Jesus. I've got them all mixed up now. There are three pieces of evidence. Three pieces of evidence. Mm. Yes. Uh, let's see. Blue shirt. Excellent. Let's say I'm with it. Ready? Oral testimony, written testimony, exhibits and artifacts. Ready? Great catch. Oh, almost. Almost there. Awesome. Good stuff. Cool. And bonus. We're talking about specific evidence that we talked about yesterday. Name a piece of evidence that proves the resurrection to be true. Claire. 500 people saw Jesus. Sig Muffin. Here you go. Nice catch. Cool. Another one. There's a couple other ones. Yep, in the back. Green shirt. Yeah. The Bible. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We're going to talk about that today. Here you go. Sig Muffin coming at you. Ready? Oh, no. Oh, bad throw. I'll get you another one later if you want one. So sorry. And there's one or two more pieces of evidence. Red shirt right here. The 12 disciples. What about them? That's right. They were eyewitnesses. Something else there, too. I'm going to get you one in a second. Yep. White shirt. Simon. The places still exist. Exhibits. That's right. I'm going to forget if I don't give one to you right now. Here you go. Coming at you. Oh, sorry. Oh, man. All right. Let's talk about it right here. We got, you. we got to move on because we have lots of things to do. 500 eyewitnesses. The transformation of the disciples. Not only did they see Jesus... But they transformed from being terrified for their lives to being willing to die and give up their lives for the name of Jesus, knowing that he did, in fact, rise from the dead. And lastly, we have four written Gospels that all say the same thing. That's very good. Did I miss anybody? I feel like I, I gave my muffins to what I needed to, right? <laughs> all right, we're moving on. Let's pray. Thank you. Lord, would you let the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight? Bless this time together. Would you speak through me and teach us from your word? We pray this in your name. Amen. Cool. Give me just a second. We're about to read our theme verse together, but I got to take a drink of water. All right, you ready? Ready with me. Here we go. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. In other words, you think about what's true and you don't just think about it because that's lame. You actually have to put it into practice. Today's sermon group discussion is on the Bible. Is it actually written by God? We're going to talk about it. Yes or no? It's a, it's a big question. To say that this is written by God is a huge claim. We're going to talk about it. But first, imagine this, right? You've been given the Bible as your instruction booklet for life. Who, who here is a big fan of Legos? I'm your Lego king. I love them. Run a Lego club at my school. It's so much fun. Imagine a set this big. Try building it without the instructions. You can try. You might, get, you might make a boat similar, but you will not make the same thing. It's not possible. It's not possible. At least from that picture, it won't be possible. You need a lot more pictures, and those pictures are provided in 
the instruction booklet. You have all these Legos right here. There's so many, so many. What are you gonna do with them? You can't possibly recreate that unless you use your instruction booklet. But the bigger question is still, is the instruction booklet trustworthy? Are we sure that the booklet for life is actually trustworthy? Or are we going to just blindly accept it and say, yeah, I hope it's okay, I guess I'm going to follow it. No, we need to know for sure, is this text, the Bible, reliable? If it's reliable, then we better base our lives off of it. We're starting there, all right? The Bible itself claims that all Scripture is inspired by God. It's a big claim, it's saying that the entire book is written by the Lord. You can't just say that about a book that you write yourself. Yo, I wrote this, check it out. Actually, God wrote it through me pretty epic, right? Everyone's going to think you're whack. And people think we're whack to claim that the Christian Bible is actually written by God, not just men. It's, it's inspired by God. It's pretty crazy. Um, before we jump in, though, disclaimer, we have 20 minutes together. I can't possibly <laughs> answer all the questions we have about the Bible's origin where it came from, how trustworthy it is. I'm going to try to hit as much stuff as I can. But the whole point is to push you in the right direction today so that you can, you can start to think about what's true, continue to pursue it, and find out more answers for yourself while you're here. Of all the places to be in the world to answer some questions about your belief in the Bible, it's a good spot to be. All right? Hit up your friends. Hit me up. I want to talk with you outside of chapel about these things. All right? There's two big questions we have to answer before we can trust the, the booklet, the instruction booklet. One, is it historically reliable? Yep. Two, is it written by God? We're gonna, I'm going to say yes to both of them. You're right on. But we need to actually prove that. I don't want to just blindly say that. So the first question we're going to hit on for most of our time together is whether or not it's historically reliable. There are three tests. Three tests of historicity. You might want to remember these. Three of them. One, bibliographical test. Big word. Can you all say bibliographical test? Yeah, it's the timing of the authorship. When were the books written? How close were they to the original events that happened inside the books? Two, the internal evidence test. Say that, internal evidence test. Great, it's, um, it's about, it's asking the question, is what was written actually true? That's kind of the question I was talking about. Is the booklet reliable? Three, external evidence. Do other sources, kind of like the exhibits and artifacts from yesterday, do they prove that this Bible is reliable. So first we're going to talk about the bi biographical test. When, there are two questions here we're answering. When were the original manuscripts written? Oh no, it's gone. Oh well. When were the original manuscripts written? And when were the earliest copies that we have today written? Spoiler alert, the Bible that you study right now is not the exact same paper that all of the epistles were written on. Mind blown. They had to copy stuff onto other pieces of paper for us to get. And we, we do the same thing today. We have copies and copies and copies. We copy and paste stuff. It's still the same words, it's just being put on different pieces of paper. You copy, so, oh, no pun intended. All right, biblical manuscript dating. Let's talk about how close the original manuscripts were to the time of the events. First, Jesus died in AD 30. Did anybody already know that? Like, around there? It's kind of confusing, because AD stands for after death which is after Jesus' death, but he, have, he like died at AD 30. I don't know what happened. But, oh, well. Anyway, moving on. Um, the original manuscripts, widely agreed upon, they were all written within 50 years of the death of Jesus. That's not that much time. That means that, means that everybody who wrote them were what? Witnesses. They were eyewitnesses. That's right. Oh my gosh, you got a Sig Muffin. I love it. Cool. The earliest manuscripts that we possess, so they're copies of the originals. People wrote them down, and 250, 300 years later, those stuck around. We still have those today, and that's where we get our Bible from, because people copy and paste and made it digital for us to see, and then they've reprinted them on Bibles. So those two dates are really important for you to know. 50 years after his death, the originals were made. 250 to 300 after these, which is really 300 years after his death, the, the manuscripts that we have today were written. All right, so let's compare that to other people. I mean, 300 years is still a long time, right? So let's compare that. 
Let's talk about Aristotle. Anyone heard that name before? Super boring philosopher. It's okay. It's fine though. 1400 years after his original writings were written, we now have a few copies of the originals. Well, remember, they're copies of the originals. They're not the actual originals. So 1400 years later, we can date these things back to that time. They're really old compared to when they were originally written. Another one, Darth Vader's History of Galactic Wars. No, wait, I'm sorry, Caesar's, oh. Star Wars is way better than Caesar. <laughs> Star Wars is so much better. Come on. Where are my Star Wars fans? Where are my Star Wars fans? Yeah, let's go. Cool. Yeah, Darth Vader's better than Caesar, but he didn't write any books. So we have to talk about Caesar. So Caesar's History of Gallic Wars. That was written a thousand years later. The copies were a thousand years older than the originals. That's a long time compared to 250 to 300 years later. Bible's got them beat. Pretty cool, right? Now, those stats are still concerning, I think, in my mind. I'm like, ah, 250 to 300 years after the originals. That's still a long time. But when you compare them with the next stat, your mind's going to be blown. Let's talk about Aristotle. In 1,400 years, only five copies of the originals can be found. So you're telling me I'm supposed to believe that Aristotle wrote that stuff? Over 1,400 years, there's only five copies that made it. Everybody believes it. I guess Aristotle wrote them. I mean, we are pretty confident it was Aristotle's writings. We're pretty confident, but it's not super reliable. Let's talk about Darth, I mean, Caesar's history of Gallic Wars. He's only got 10. Guess how many the Bible has? Say a number. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. Way higher. Yeah. Way higher. Yes. Lower. Nice try. Yeah. Lower than that. Last guess. 12,000. Higher. It is 20,000 copies. You compare these. These are some really good texts. Aristotle and Darth Vader's texts, they're like, they're really reliable. Everybody, everybody trusts them as like reliable historical documents. And then they just dismiss the Bible and say, this is, this is written by God apparently, so we can't trust it. There's 20,000 copies that all say the same thing. Think about this. Over the course of 250 to 300 years, people copied the original. Remember, there's only one original. People copied the original 20,000 times. Not only did they keep them in the same room, but they spread them all over the Roman Empire, all over the place. That includes Italy and the Middle East. That entire area has 20,000 copies circulating, and then we discovered them later today. Just imagine the margin for error. I'm, going to for, I'm not going to say what I want to unless I read exactly what I wrote. Here we go. The amount of accuracy to keep 20,000 hand copies our hand-copied versions of the original manuscripts in agreement, saying the same thing, is astounding. They all say the same thing. The margin for error is massive. Remember, they didn't have the ability to copy and paste. <laughs> they had to take a pen without an eraser and copy the entire thing. Imagine being one of those copiers. You're handed a big stack of papers, 50 papers. All right, here's your job, kid. You have to copy 50 pieces of paper, and they all have the most important text in all of history. And you have to make 10 copies of that, and you have one year to do it. And if you mess up, you have to start all over again. Doesn't that sound exciting? Yeah. yeah. Woo! Woo. Uh, sounds really cool. What I would be doing? I'd be writing down, all right, Jesus fed the 5,000. I'm so hungry right now. He turned the hamburgers into, wait, no, those are fish. Those are fish. Oh, shoot, I messed up. Throw it out. Start over again. Like, you, I would, I would get so bored so fast. I don't know. Monks have this way of loving to do that. I'm not a monk. I've never loved copying things by hand. But they did it back in the day, copied 20,000 copies. They did it right. They did it perfectly. And it's not just men involved, right? We're saying, according to Scripture, all Scripture is inspired by God. But it's not only inspired, it's preserved. How could that possibly explain, have any other explanation? To have 20,000 copies circulated all over the Roman Empire, God must have been involved. 
he must have preserved all 20,000 copies. Otherwise, the margin for error, they, they would clearly disagree with each other if God was not involved. All right, so let's see what you remember. How many years after Jesus died were the originals written? Were the originals written? Yes. 50 years. You got it. Here you go. Coming at you. Cool. Good catch. Next. Oh, wait. How many years, everybody? You say it? 50. 50. Okay, next question. How many years after the originals were the other manuscripts written that we have today? Um, is that Felix? No. no. Zane, I'm so sorry. Zane, go. That's right. Felix, I'll get you next time. Good stuff. We'll say it together. Ready? 250 to 300 years. Very good. All right, we'll come back to more tests. Thank you so much for raising your hand and wanting to participate. I love it. I know you all know the answers. You got them. Internal test. We're on to test number two. We're flying. Is the original text what the people wrote in the first document, the 50-year-old document, right? Is that reliable and true? Well, let's talk about it. I love that you're raising your hand. We'll get to it in a second. Lots of things, right? First, eyewitnesses. We know these first texts were written by eyewitnesses. This was a big thing yesterday. Ian has to, had to ask his buddies, yo, did you see me at breakfast? Yes, I saw you at breakfast. <clears throat> Same thing. Did these people actually see Jesus raised from the dead? Yes, they did. Here's the really important text. For we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus, but we were all eyewitnesses. Who do you think it's talking about when we, he says... We were all. This was Paul writing. We were all. Who's we? What do you think? Yeah. The disciples. Yes. Right on. You got it. Here you go. Coming at you. Oh, nice. Cool. Oh, I'll get you next time. All right. Excellent. The disciples. They were all eyewitnesses, and they were the ones who wrote the Bible, right? Negative details. This is big. Think about it. If you want to fabricate a religion or a worldview that you want people to catch on to real quick, you don't want it to look bad. We want it to look good, no problems, right? Perfect. No. <laughs> if you know anything about the disciples, they were other messed up people just like us. The disciples, I don't know if you remember this, they competed to get Jesus' approval. Like, like they wanted to be seated next to him in heaven. And Jesus was like, what are you talking about? I'm about to go die. And they're, they're missing the point. Peter's denial. He denied Jesus three times. Who remembers that account in the Bible? Yeah, you're right on, hands down. That's a big deal. This is, um, Peter's um, um, frequently known or labeled as the founder of the church. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church when referring to Peter. And Peter denied Jesus three times. Is he really a trustworthy guy? Well, yeah, he is. But they, they chose to keep in the bad details. You wouldn't do that if you wanted to make your, your text look good. Thirdly, don't forget about Jesus. We talked about this guy yesterday. What he says goes. And he said that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. So we have Old Testament. We have Jesus right here. On this side, we have the New Testament. He fulfilled this stuff. He's right here. The New Testament is talking all about how Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. When Jesus says, I fulfilled the Old Testament and the law and the prophets, the New Testament is affirming that. Jesus is actually affirming the teaching of the New Testament that's about to happen, right? Fourthly, ooh, big question. Same, I want, I want your involvement on this. How many prophecies did Jesus fulfill? Have any idea? Caleb? Thousands. Thousands? Yes? You know, I'm technically yes. I'm going to talk about very specific major prophecies. It's going to be less than that. There are many, many prophecies in the Bible. Calvin, seven? Higher than that. Yes. All of them. All, well, yes. Amen to that. Amen, sister. That's right. Yes. Black shirt. 40. 40? What were we going to say? 360. Here's our answer. 60. 60 major prophecies, which at face value doesn't sound impressive. You're like, oh, man, I wanted 300 prophecies fulfilled by Jesus. Why? Well, 60 major prophecies is a big deal. We're going to talk about why. Oh, by the way, this, is not, this does not uh, include all the other prophecies throughout the entire Bible that have been fulfilled that make the text reliable. We're just talking about Jesus right now. 60 about Jesus. Cool? 
the chances of fulfilling eight of them in one person, according to, forgot his name, a weird name, Professor Stoner, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, 60 major prophecies. The chances of that, 1 in 10 to the 17th power. Check out the size of that number. That big. 100 quadrillion. So you're saying that if you were just to like randomly choose people, just, just on sure randomness, if, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, yeah, if you were just to use a random, random chance, only one in every 100 quadrillion would actually land on eight of them being fulfilled. That's only eight. Take 60. That number gets massive. It gets massive. Remember that number, 60 prophecies. It's a big deal. All right. The New Testament was written by. Was written by, yes. Right, do you know it? No? That's fine. Uh, Felix. That's right. Talk about the description of the disciples. Who were they? What was so important about them in relationship to Jesus? I'll come back to you. Yeah, killed. Eyewitnesses, that's absolutely right. You got it. Here you go. Coming at you. Good stuff. Everyone say, written by eyewitnesses. There we go. Cool. And we have negative details. You can't make this stuff up. There's a lot of bad stuff included in the story, which proves it actually is authentic. Thirdly, Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament. Now it's in the New Testament. Fourthly, how many? Oh. Oh, man. What's the answer? <laughs> you know, I worked so hard on that slide. I, like, made the little shape, and I, like, put the question mark in it. Dang it. Oh. All right. Well, y'all y'all get candy later. What's up? All oh, right. Yeah, you deserve one for that. Now, 270 ramifications. That just means 270 other, like, prophecies that hinted at the Messiah. They're related to. So we have 60 definite about the Messiah. 270 that were kind of about him, but not as clear. Third test. Who, who just answered that question? Cool. Ready? Come on at you. Nice. Hey, that's my first good throw today. All right. Do the other historical people and evidence prove that the Bible is reliable? This is our last one. We're not going to spend much time on it. Well, yeah, they do. That's all I have to say. No, I'm kidding. All right. Contemporaries. You don't know who these people are. I don't know who these people are, but they were important back in the day. I think their names were. Yep. Eusebius. Can you all say that? Eusebius. No, you sound so bored. Can you say, Eusebius? Eusebius. Thank you. And the other one is Arrhenius. Arrhenius. Yes, Eusebius and Arrhenius. Eusebius and Arrhenius. Excellent. They were authors back in the day. They have written some other texts that you can still access today, and they said, yeah, my, my friends who wrote the Bible weren't messing around. They actually did write the truth. And then archaeology. We talked about this yesterday. Remember, we can actually visit all the places that were written about in the Bible. We can visit those today. All right, so we got these three tests. Say the underlined text with me. Ready? Go. Biographical text. Internal evidence. External evidence. And to clarify, bibli uh, yeah, bibliographical, big word. It's talking about the timing. Internal. Was it actually reliable? Thirdly, do people affirm that it was reliable? Great. In conclusion, Josh McDowell, anyone heard of the guy? You should read his, his stuff. It's really awesome. He, he, was, <laughs> he was someone who believed the Bible was a lie, and Jesus could not have possibly risen from the dead. He spent hundreds of hours researching to prove that he was right, and he proved himself wrong, and actually came to know the Lord, realizing the, what, the evidence is overwhelmingly in favor of the Bible and of the resurrection. It's pretty awesome. He wrote, if a person discards the Bible as unreliable, then he or she must discard all the other books from that time. The Bible has to be reliable. So, two questions. We answered this one. Now we've got to answer this one. Was it written by God? Well, we can't use the legal historical method to prove that it was written by God. But it claims to be written by God. Let's talk about the first one. We just, we just talked about how totally accurate this thing is. 
It's the most accurate book in all of history. It's so perfect. You can't mess around with it. Secondly, how many prophecies again were fulfilled in Jesus? You say it? Great. Thirdly, testimonies. Ask anybody who's been a Christian for a while and who's studied the Word. You can ask them and realize their life has been transformed by the supernatural power of this book. This book. You can ask people today. So you have eyewitness accounts today of how the Bible has affected their lives. And th- fourthly, if the Bible claims that it was written by God, <laughs> and it's the most reliable text in all of history, how can you say it didn't? It wasn't written by God. How can you argue with that? All scripture is written by God. Like, no, you definitely can't say that. You have no right, Bible. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, because it's the most reliable text in all of history. You can't, you can't argue with that. It's really powerful. How else would you expect God to communicate to us? If you're still an objection, like, I don't know, I still don't believe it's totally written by God. What if, what if only parts of it were? How else would you expect God to communicate with us? Yeah, what do you think? Go ahead. Yeah. You could pray? Yeah, he could communicate to us through, through prayer, like visions and things like that. That's right on. He could also communicate to us through modern prophets. Here's the problem with visions. Not everybody gets them. You might get a vision, but we wouldn't all see it. You'd have to describe it to us, right? Modern prophets, they would tell us a word, but they don't have access to the whole world. Why not write a book? Why not write a book with all of your stuff in it? Why not write an instruction manual to explain how to build your life? Why not do it? Disclaimer, I know this is a lot of info. So if you're like, ah, I still don't really buy this. I'm not totally sold on it. That's, that's okay. But you have until the end of the week <laughs> to talk with people, to figure this out. And I want you to answer this question for yourself. At least attempt to by the end of the week. Um, number one, if you believe this already, yo, I believe the Bible is true. I believe it's reliable. Then don't just move on from this sermon thinking, huh, that was nice. Caleb did a nice job. There's a lot of proof for the Bible. Okay. No, take ownership of that truth. Make sure you know your stuff so that when someone else mocks you like they did me in middle school, say, you believe the Bible, you believe that they parted the Red Sea, that God parted the Red Sea, you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, you're an idiot. You're so stupid for believing that stuff. No, I'm not. Check out the proof. I know it. Let me, let me show you the proof that proves this is reliable. And then for those who don't believe this, wrestle with the truth. See if you can come up with the answers that you need and talk with people here. Last question, and I asked you this before. What more would it take you to convince you that the Bible is God's word? What more would it take you? I love your hands. We'll talk to them later, okay? What more would it take? Do you really need more evidence? Do you really need more evidence? There's so much there. You don't need more evidence. Get over yourself. In due time, trust the Lord and go from there. Three tests of history. Uh, historicity. What are they? We talked about them today. This was today's content. Yes, orange shirt, top right. That's great. Let's say them together. Go. Bibliographical test. Internal evidence. And external. Oh, I'm sorry. Bad throw. All right, next. Jesus fulfilled how many major prophecies? How many major prophecies? Or a red shirt. 60. That's very good. 60 prophecies. Coming at you. Ready? Nice. Cool. Everyone say, 60 major prophecies. 60 major prophecies. Can you say with a British accent? 60 major prophecies. 60 major prophecies. Each New Testament book was originally written only how many years after Jesus' death? Yes. 50, 50 years. Yes, that's correct. Nicely done. Ooh. You ready? Here we go. Coming up to you. Oh, that was a bad throw. Bad one, bad one. All right, last one. How many earliest manuscripts were written 250 to 300 years after the originals? Just say it if you know it. 20,000. Oh, well, I guess I don't have the answer there for you, but you are correct. Look, you've been given the instruction manual for your life. Why wouldn't you use it? You have all these Legos. How are you supposed to make this into a Lego set without using the instruction manual? How are you supposed to make it into a Lego set without using the instruction manual? 
You must read and know God's word. Now we're going to spend the rest. Last thing I'm saying, right here. There's two verses that point out we, we cannot make that into what we need to. We cannot form our life into what's best for us without following God's word. And God's word proves it to us right here. God says, every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord knows what's up, basically. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? We can't. Our heart is so wicked. We are messed up people and we cannot possibly align our lives with what's best for ourselves unless we refer to God's word. Finally, can we read this together? Go and say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The solution is provided for us in Scripture. When we don't know all the answers, when we're not even 100% sold that the Bible had to be written by God, if we're still uncertain about that, trust God with that uncertainty as you look for truth with regards to that matter. And He will guide you. He will guide your path. He will direct your path as you seek for truth. If this is actually God's Word, then we can trust Him to guide, to guide us as we pursue it. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you so much for giving us your word. Your word is reliable. We can trust it. We can study it and align our lives according to it so that we can build our lives according to your design. Thank you so much for sending your son and that he fulfilled 60 prophecies to prove the authenticity of the Bible and the legitimacy of himself and his life death, and resurrection. We praise you and thank you for all these things. And it's in your Son's most powerful name, which defeated the grave, that we pray. Amen.